Welcome to Maple Learn. In this video, I will give you a brief tutorial so that you can get started. All you need to use Maple Learn is an internet connection and a web browser point you to the URL learn.maplesoft.com. Here is Maple Learn access via a Chrome browser. This is the gallery where you can browse documents, collections, and search. But we'll start by opening a new document. Math in MapleLearn is organized into groups. I can double click anywhere on the canvas to create a group. Groups can be moved by clicking and dragging the gray bar. The number associated with the group will change when it's moved, as seen here. There is also a snapping behavior in MapleLearn, which allows you to easily align two groups. Groups consist of a collection of cells, which are either a math cell, the default, or a text cell, identified by the orange text icon. You can create a text cell by pressing the spacebar at the start of the cell or by using the cell settings found in the cog beside the cell and then clicking the text mode checkbox. In the cell settings, you can also revert a text cell back to a math cell by unchecking this checkbox. Math entered into a math cell will be evaluated, while math entered into a text cell is never evaluated. As you can see, when I type in this math cell, it will interpret each character as an individual variable and provide results. But if I turn it into a text cell, it'll no longer provide results. If you want a line break in a text cell, use the keyboard shortcut to shift to enter. To enter math or text in a cell, you can use your keyboard or you can use the palettes. With the palettes, I can enter piecewise functions, units, matrices, and more. To insert a new cell, use the toolbar buttons. You can use this button to insert a cell below, and this button to insert a cell above. Alternatively, we can use enter at the end of a cell to insert a cell below and enter at the start of a cell to insert a cell above. When clicking into a group, all of the expressions, inequalities, and functions will be graphed in the plot window. Here you can zoom, show special points, which will show intersections, extrema, discontinuities, and intercepts, and much more. In math mode, MapleLearn will provide results and allow you to access the context panel operations, which are dependent on the input. As you can see, clicking into group 1 will give me different options than clicking into group 2. Here's an example of results. And here's a sample context panel operation. As well, updating the input will automatically change the result of context panel operations. If there are many context panel operations, you can use the search function. MapleLearn has various commands found in the geometry palette, which will help you create detailed visualizations. For example, here's the triangle command, where I will input the coordinates for each vertex. You can also embed your plot in a group using the context panel operation. This plot will be available even when your focus is on another group. You can also embed the plot of multiple expressions. The first way is to click on the first cell that you want, hold shift and click on the last cell. This will select everything in between. Then I can use the context panel operation to embed the plot. The second way is to hold control and select the individual cells that you want to be plot. It is important to note here that using shift and control to select cells allows you to do more than just plot. For example, 
Here I'll get the solution set for this system of equations. Understanding parameters and assignments is important for using MapleLearn. Parameterizing a variable means expressing it in terms of one or more parameters, like a number, or two variables. You can parameterize your expression by using the assignment operator, which is colon equals. The other option is by using the context panel entry. For numeric values, this will generate a slider, which can be removed in the cell settings. Both embedded plots and plots in the plot window will update automatically when you change your parameterized variable, as well any other function or expression that uses this variable. If I add m to the start of this cell, I can drag the slider, which will update both the derivative and the plots. I can also type in a number for m, and everything will update again. A great feature of sliders in MapleLearn is that they can be animated. This is done by going into the plot settings and clicking the animate slider checkbox. It'll animate between your lower and upper bounds. This will update both context panel entries, embedded plots, and the plot window. Equations specify a mathematical relationship, and so they do not affect the values of their variables. This allows you to use these variables in other instances. For example, I can define two equations with x and y in the same group. Assignments in MapleLearn take place top to bottom within a group and left to right on the canvas. All assignments in a group will occur sequentially within the group and before any assignments in later groups. More importantly, any assignments defined in previous groups are available in the current group. This may sound complex, and so it is best understood with an example. Here, I have a function that I would like to find the x-intercept of. If I assign variables to the coefficients, it will allow the quadratic formula in group 4 to be evaluated. Since the assignment of variables is sequential, the variables assigned in group 3 can be overwritten in group 4 to change the quadratic formula solution. For example, I can redefine a, b, and c here. Now MapleLearn will take these variables since they are defined after the variables in group 3. It is important to remember that when moving groups, the order of assignment will be impacted. For example, if I move group 4 above group 3 so that it becomes the new group 3, it will no longer know the values of a, b, and c. Now we will explore how MapleLearn can be used to answer some simple problems. In example 1, we are asked to find how many water bottles Emily should pack for a 12-day trip. Given that she used 18 water bottles on an 8-day trip, we can use our knowledge of ratios to solve this problem, since we know that she uses 18 water bottles on an 8-day trip. This is equal to the number of water bottles she needs on a 12-day trip over 12 days. I could use the context panel to solve this problem, but instead I'm going to use copy down to seamlessly work through my problem in MapleLearn. As you can see, Emily needs to bring 27 water bottles on a 12-day camping trip. In example 2, we need to see how long it takes Ava to catch up to Mike, given that Mike leaves at 8 a.m. at 50 km an hour, and Ava leaves 2 hours later at 70 km an hour. If we let the equation for Mike's distance equal to the equation for Ava's distance in terms of t, then we'll be able to solve for the time at which both drivers are at the same distance. Instead of using copy down to work through my answer, like in example one, I'm going to use the context panel. As we can see, at t equals 7, Ava will have caught up to Mike. 
However, Ava leaves two hours later than Mike, and so it took her five hours to catch up. In example three, we are asked to find the equation of a line which passes through the points 2, 1, and 4, 7. We are also given the formula to find the slope. To begin, I'll parameterize a variable to represent each coordinate in the points. Since we parameterize the variables, which are used in the slope formula, MapleLearn will automatically calculate it for us. The next step is to use this slope and one of the points to solve for B. And now we can use MapleLearn to solve for B. Using the context panel entry assign value to variable on the solution line will allow us to have all the elements to create our equation of a line using MapleLearn. As you can see, our line is in the plot window, but what if we wanted to check to make sure our points are on that line? And now we can verify that our points are indeed on the line. To get our equation, we can click on this line and hit Use Calculator Result, which will provide our equation. Because I parameterized each of the coordinates, I can use the slider or edit the variable to get a completely new solution. As you can see, each of the calculations updates, as well as our plot. And now, we can use Calculator Result to get our new equation of a line. Finally, I will show you how all of MapleLearn's features come together to help you solve a math problem. We must find the rate of change of the concentration of anesthesia 12 hours after it is administered. To begin, we will find the derivative. We can work out the derivative on MapleLearn, or we can write out our solutions on paper and use Maple Calculator to bring our work into MapleLearn. I have written out my solution on paper, and so I'll now show you how to scan it using Maple Calculator and bring it into MapleLearn. Launching Maple Calculator, I navigate to the camera tab, drag a box around my mouth to frame it, and hit the photo button. Now, back in MapleLearn, since I am signed into the same account on both Learn and Calculator, I can insert my results by clicking on Cloud Expressions and selecting my work. Now that my work is in MapleLearn, I can check my work with two methods. The first method is through Context Panel Operations, which has three options. The first option is to copy the original function, use Differentiate with respect to t, and then simplify. The second option is to use C prime of t, since it's parameterized above, and then hit simplify. And the third option is to copy d over dt, and then hit simplify. The other method is to use the check my work function. If I copy my original work, I can use check my work, which will annotate my work line by line and let me know if I made any mistakes. As you can see, I found the correct derivative. Since I parameterized the function, I can sub in 12 into C prime to get our answer approximated at 10 digits. If you are curious what the rate of change was for other times after it was administered, you could use a table. If we go into the settings for our table, you'll notice that a value table is turned on. This will allow subsequent columns to use the inputs of X and fill in the column below.
In our case, we will use c prime of x since we want to know what the rate of change is for different hours after it was administered. As you can see, our table will fill in the values and plot points on our graph. This will allow us to have a nice visualization. If you would like to share your document with another MapleLearn user, click the Share Link button. This will create a link, which is a snapshot of your document and can be shared to any user. If you would like to see the share link for this document, check the video's description. As your next step, check out the MapleLearn gallery found through the home icon. Here, you can explore published documents from other creators. If you open a document up, you'll see the option to save a copy where you can customize these documents for your liking. Now, to become a MapleLearn expert, I recommend exploring the how-to collection. The documents here contain walkthroughs of various MapleLearn features. I hope you found this introduction video helpful. If you have any questions about using MapleLearn, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at maplesoft.com. Thank you.